So let's discuss another protocol. In this case, a time lapse without any Z. So this is a time lapse at a single position with uh, no Z stacks. So in this case, uh, we have this time repeat where we have an interval, which we can set, or a frequency, or we can tell it to go as fast as we can, and then the number of times we want it to repeat. Um, or we can also say for how long we want the imaging to go. So I am going to do a five second interval. And I'm going to say I want to acquire 10 images. And if I hit acquire, it will do that for the channels I have selected. In this case, that is just uh, the GFP. So let me add the DAPI again. And if I hit acquire, it'll just take images one after the other. You can see that here it says how much time is remaining and here what the runtime is. So it's waiting five seconds between the start of each imaging session. And here, if we scroll through this, we can see the exact time at which um, each of these uh, frames was acquired. Something important to keep in mind, particularly when doing time-lapse experiments with live samples, is that those samples can drift in their Z positions due to small fluctuations in temperature. So this microscope has an option that can help with this called drift stabilization. The drift stabilization feature measures the distance between the front face of the objective and a specific plane in the sample. If there is a drift in that distance during a time-lapse, the system will adjust the Z position to compensate. For the drift stabilization to work, the drift stabilization mirror has to be inserted, and then you have to click on active. Um, and if it can work, uh, that will turn it on. The way the system measures the distance between the front of the objective and the sample is by measuring a reflection that occurs as a result of the difference between the refractive index of the immersion media and some part of the sample. So the system works very well with air objectives because there's a large difference in refractive index between air and the cover glass. For oil objectives, the refractive index of the oil is the same as the glass, but if the sample media has a different refractive index, there will be a reflection there and it can work as well. So this is typically the case if you have an aqueous sample. However, if you have a mounting media with a very high refractive index, it might not work. For water objectives, there are two reflections, one between the water and the cover glass, the other between the cover glass and the imaging media. The former is typically a bit stronger and the system can use it to compensate. So let's see if this works for the sample that we have on here, which is uh, a sample that's in a sort of glycerol-ish mounting media, and we're looking at it with an air objective. And you can see that when I click this, the green light turns on, and that means that the drift stabilization is engaged.